So what is the best camera for YouTube this year? Well, there's a huge battle between the Canon M50 and the new Sony ZV-1. And in this video, we're gonna look into the pros and cons of each of them to look for the true winner. Let's get it. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar with Think Media, helping you build your influence with online video. And on this channel, sometimes we do tips and strategy videos, as well as tech gear reviews, just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So both of these cameras have a lot of differences, but they also have a lot of things in common that make them great cameras for YouTube and creating content. So let's get into them. Both cameras have a flip out articulating screen. Sony's first camera with this actually built in and something you want when filming yourself. They both have incredible autofocus. Canon's M50 has the dual pixel autofocus in 1080 and Sony has eye autofocus in 4K, making it super easy to keep yourself in focus. What's cool about the Sony ZV-1 is they included product showcase mode, which allows you to show off products and then it'll focus off your face and onto whatever you're showing. This is a great feature for people who are doing product reviews, um, but with the Canon M50, you'll kind of have to hide your face uh, from the product and allow your camera to then focus on the product. And if you wanna level up your audio, these both have audio inputs, so you can add a shotgun or lavalier mic to them. They both have great colors coming straight out of the camera, so you don't really need to color grade your footage unless you want to. Sony actually has their newest color science technology in the ZV-1, which has improved skin tones and overall interpretation of true colors, which Sony users like myself are pretty pumped about. Both cameras have been created with the beginner in mind, making it super easy to use straight out of the box, which is awesome about each of these cameras. And because Sony and Canon having their webcam utility apps, both these cameras can be used as webcams for live streaming. So you can really increase the quality of how your live streams look with each of these cameras. And lastly, they both have small form factors, making it super easy to bring with you wherever you go. Obviously the ZV-1 is much smaller because it's a compact point and shoot camera, but all in all, they're both pretty small when you compare them to what cameras used to be. Now the first advantage of the Canon M50 is the price. You can buy the Canon M50 refurbished on Canon site for just under $480 with the kit lens. And that's a pretty great deal and something you wanna think about when you're purchasing other equipment to really build out your YouTube setup with your tripod, your lighting, and your mic. Uh, you could still be way under $1,000 when going with the Canon M50. Another great thing about the Canon M50 is it's a camera with interchangeable lenses, allowing you to upgrade and change your lens to achieve various different looks like the 10 to 22 millimeter lens is a great lens for vlogging, uh, which is awesome. But Sigma has also released a full line of lenses for the EFM mount, which is the Canon M50. And we love the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 lens because it's a great universal focal length and it'll give you that super nice blurry background you have always dreamed of. I'm actually using the Sigma 16 millimeter lens right now on my Sony, but you can also put adapters on the Canon M50 and allow you to use other Canon lenses. And we actually made a video on the best lenses for the M50 if you wanna check out that video, we'll put a link in the YouTube card and in the description below. But we definitely need to talk about some of the cons when it comes to the Canon M50. The first con would definitely have to be that the Canon M50 has a very unusable and impractical 4K. It only shoots up to 24 frames per second. When you hop into 4K, there's a huge crop in and then you lose the autofocus. And so you kind of have to manually focus yourself and it just really requires a lot of energy and a lot of know-how to get the best results. And I believe it's not that practical for most people. But question for you is, do you think 4K matters? Do you shoot in 4K? Do you wanna shoot in 4K? Let me know in the comment section below. Also in regards to resolution, both cameras do shoot in 1080 at 60 frames per second but the M50 drops down to 720p when shooting in 120 frames per second, where the Sony ZV-1 actually holds 1080 at up to 240 frames per second. So if 4K and slow motion was at the top of your list, then the Sony ZV-1 would definitely be the better choice. Now, before we get into the pros and cons of the ZV-1, I wanted to first talk about the lens because I don't think it's neither a con or a pro, but the lens is a 24 to 70 millimeter equivalent, 1.8 to 2.8 lens, which with that combination is very versatile for shooting photos or video. But unfortunately for vlogging, it might be a little bit too tight for most people's preferences. Uh, when you're at arm's length distance, it's a nice like medium wide shot, but not really wide. 
Um, but the cool thing is for creating YouTube videos like this, like talking head videos or product reviews, essentially when your camera is locked on a tripod, it's a great lens and uh, it does give you that nice blurry background. And actually, if you wanted to achieve the same look with the Canon M50, you would have to invest into that Sigma 16 millimeter lens, which costs around $400, making the M50s total to be essentially the same price as the ZV-1. So that's just something to think about. The Sony ZV-1 comes in at around $800, which in our opinion is great with what this camera packs. And also take into consideration the previous point and shoot from Sony, the RX100 Mark VII, cost it around $1,200. So it's pretty cool that they were able to uh, get this down to a, a generally affordable price point, And in my opinion, isn't a bad deal. The first pro about this camera is definitely its reliability in 4K and the overall image quality. The footage from the ZV-1 is just so much more superior than the Canon M50 because uh, with the lens at 1.8 to 2.8, you can really always achieve that blurry background no matter your situation. The autofocus would also be a pro because you really can't beat eye autofocus in video. It has 425 contrast detection autofocus points. Uh, so you don't have to worry about not being in focus, which is super cool. And the product feature mode that I mentioned earlier is also pretty cool, just allowing uh, to focus on whatever's closest to the camera. The ZV-1 also has a great sounding onboard mic. All right, this is an audio test. We got music going on. We got people in the background, sorry, I didn't ask your permission. We got cars going by, but this is how it sounds. Onboard mic test, uh, just out here in the strip. So if you're at about arm's length distance, like if you're vlogging or you're just about arm's length distance from the camera itself, the audio will sound pretty solid. And so mounting a separate mic isn't necessary. And they also include a wind muff uh, that sits at the top of the onboard mic, which helps the audio when shooting outside. The Canon M50 does have an onboard mic that you can use, but I would say isn't that usable uh, in regards to creating content. Another thing I love about the Sony ZV-1 is that it has an internal ND filter, or essentially it has a built-in sunglass for the lens. So if you're filming outside or in very bright situations to keep your settings dialed in and your aperture low for that super blurry background. They also included a button on the top uh, that will literally override all your settings and give you that blurry background. It's called defocus mode. Uh, they also have a clear mode, but if you are ever in a pinch or you just wanna like get that blurry background, get your face in focus, hit that defocus button, and then the camera will do the work for you. This makes it super easy to use for beginners and achieve the look that they want. Another pro would definitely be that there is no record limit on the ZV-1. So you can capture as long as your battery or card can take, whichever comes first. And whereas most cameras like the M50 stop recording at around 30 minutes. And so, so it's a super cool feature when I'm usually shooting myself, it's nice to not have to think about that record limit so I can just focus on creating the content. And based off of our friend Jason Vong's test, you can get a little over an hour in 4K video before the battery dies out, but you can also get a power adapter that'll give you unlimited battery. So that's a way to get around that uh, time limit. What's also cool is if you want to shoot in flat colored profiles and color grade your footage, you can because the Sony ZV-1 has their infamous S-Log, Hyper-Log Gamma, uh, and so you could spice up your videos with color grading and things like that. Now, there's definitely some cons you wanna consider with the Sony ZV-1, and I would say the first one would be its focal length at 24 millimeters. Uh, it doesn't really make it a perfect vlogging camera. You know, a lot of people who do vlogs and things like that really need that super wide look, and you wanna get everything that's behind you and maybe a little bit of headroom, but at 24 millimeters on this, when you're all the way zoomed out, it's a little bit uh, like a medium wide, and so uh, for most people, it might not work, um, especially when you hop into 4K, there is a very slight, slight crop. I would say it maybe isn't that recognizable, uh, but in 4K, you're gonna lose a little bit of that wideness. So in 1080, it's a great shot, but just something to think about if you are okay with how uh, the focal length is at 24 millimeters for vlogging. Another thing to consider when vlogging and having a cropped image is if you turn on steady shot, which is their uh, stabilization technology, and you put it on active, which is the highest stabilization setting, there's another crop that will take place. And so if you're vlogging and it's shaking a ton, uh, you know, and you want that on, it really becomes essentially like a 35 millimeter lens, which is just way too tight to film uh, a vlog shot. But that's just something to take into consideration. Um, I found having that off and just keeping it on standard, the steady shot, isn't too bad, um, but just something to think about when uh, considering the ZV-1. The next con of the ZV-1 would be its battery life. The, these batteries don't really run that long 
And um, it's definitely something to consider when you buy this camera. You wanna probably invest into two or three more batteries, um, as well as that uh, power adapter that I mentioned earlier. So if you're shooting inside and you have access to power, then probably using that would be your best bet. But definitely having to swap out your batteries often is definitely a, a bummer when you're uh, focusing on shooting, 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 um, but something to think about with the ZV-1. Now, the question is, which one do you get for YouTube and why? Let me know based off of what I said in this video in the comment section below, which one you would like to go with, uh, with the legendary M50 or the new Sony ZV-1. Also, if you wanna see more detailed specs on each of these cameras, we'll make sure we put links in the description below. Now, for me, I'm a sucker for crispy 4K video, as well as a quick ease of use. As much as I know how to use cameras, I don't wanna have to think about it too much. And I love that in, you know, internal ND filter and things like that of the Sony ZV-1. I would probably just get that continuous battery uh, power and run with the Sony ZV-1. Now, after putting both of these cameras to the test, these are both incredible cameras for YouTube and really do stand as one of the best contenders for the best camera for YouTube, especially for beginners. And so, you know, there's the price point of the M50, but then there's just the, you don't have to think about anything else with the ZV-1. However, when you do make these camera purchases, you wanna keep into consideration the lighting, the audio, the things like that. And so we actually have a playlist on the best accessories for YouTube videos. And you can check that out by clicking or tapping the screen, or you can also check out another Think Media video by clicking or tapping the screen. And I can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.